Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're going to be covering the Freeform View feature in Premiere Pro. But because you've probably had about six months now to play around with it and get used to it, we're going to be going over some more creative ways that you can use it just a little bit more effectively. Okay, so if you're totally new to this, the Freeform View in Premiere Pro basically just takes the thumbnail view here and gives you the ability to move it all around however you want. Simple as that. This means that you have the full freedom to make as many different combinations and positionings to organize your project exactly how you want. Complete freedom. But limitless options can also lead to a lot of information where you as the viewer might say, cool, but I don't really see myself using any of this in my own personal workflow. So that's why we wanna give you some really unique options that you actually might be able to use, but let's just get right into it and start out with number one, color mats and sequences. When it comes to actually practically using the Freeform View feature, you have countless different methods of sorting and collecting your footage. You can go by shot type, like wide, medium, and close up. You can go by which character is in the frame, or even set up your entire video in chronological order. But no matter what method you choose, labeling sections with color can be super helpful, but no, not the way that you're thinking right now. The normal way to do it would be to right click and select a label color. But that just shows up as a little badge here in the corner, not totally optimal in my humble opinion. So what I like to do is right click anywhere in the gray here and create a new color map. Choose the color that you want and once you do, place it above your grouping or collection of footage. Use this as a way to organize by type or even as a way to signal to yourself little details about what you want something like mood to be during this particular section. On its own, that's cool, but let's actually take it up a notch. Right click on this color mat and select create new sequence from clip and here you can add text to extend over the beginning of your sequence. And the whole point of this is that now you've actually created a title within the freeform window to literally tell yourself what each of these sections are for. B-roll, music selection, etc. And right click and change the size of this item to make it larger or smaller depending on your own personal preferences. And there's nothing stopping you from getting creative and adding some of the other features from within the project window. Like for example, Adding black video if you're arranging in a chronological start to finish order for places where you'd want to signal a fade to black, or maybe even some color bars if you want to signal to yourself that there's something missing at this particular point. Number two, use bins. We're not going to spend too much time on this because despite thinking it's important to know and that it's kind of cool if used correctly, it's not my own personal preference to use in my own workflow. You can actually get pretty meta by creating bins to create multiple sets of freeform windows. Organize all the shots from scene seven into your own bin and drag the scene around. The big idea here isn't the fact that you can have bins and arrange the bins all in a nice order, but more so that each new bin that you create is a new opportunity for a new freeform window. You're not limited to just one freeform window to have your grand master plan all laid out. If you notice your mind map getting a little too cluttered, break it down with bins and structure each unique scene in its own freeform view. Number three, hide items. Hiding items isn't exclusive to freeform view, but I find it really, really, really helpful to use alongside this feature. Sometimes you wanna get rid of something like, hey, I know I'm not gonna use this clip because it's not my favorite take, but I don't wanna delete it from my project window because there could be some use for it. So what do I do? Highlight that clip or set of clips, right click and select hide and poof, they're gone. But guess what? They're not actually gone. Right click anywhere in the gray and select view hidden and boom, they're back. Just another way to keep things organized without being permanently destructive in the process. And number four, get a dedicated second monitor. Whoa, 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 hold on, hear me out. I know that sounds a little bit strange, but secondhand monitors can actually go for really cheap and getting a second monitor is actually gonna help out all those other tips and make each of them a little bit more effective. Check out Craigslist, secondhand shops like Goodwills, computer recycling places, etc. You could get a cheap monitor for like 20 bucks or less and it doesn't need to be like this fancy 4K monitor. It doesn't even need to be 1080p because the video in the thumbnails don't even show up at a high resolution. Once you've got that second monitor set up, have this as the sole purpose of housing your freeform project panel. And you can save this layout type in your workspaces. So what's the reason why this is helpful? It's because it gives you even more screen real estate to be able to organize your project in its entirety. And not only that, let's say for example that you decided to storyboard out your entire project from start to finish in this viewer. Kind of like so. Now in this dedicated monitor, you can actually look up whenever you want and have a bird's eye view of what your film is actually going to entail so that you can keep things in mind like tone, pacing, and themes with just a quick glance at any given moment. 
And guys, that's just been a couple unique ways you can use to get the most out of Premiere Pro's Freeform Viewer. I really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you did, consider liking it, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and even sharing this video with a fellow video editor friend. And as always, we have tons of resources here at MotionArray.com to help you get the most out of your video projects. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.